Hello and welcome to today's yoga practice to improve your balance and stability. If you find balancing challenging, this is a great sequence to repeat frequently to improve and strengthen your balance. And make sure you're close to a wall or have a chair next to you in case you need that extra support every now and then to just place your hand onto and help you with, that, with the wobbling. All you need is a yoga mat, potentially a yoga block if you have tight hamstrings for our half moon posture. And other than that, 30 minutes to yourself. And to meet me in a standing position, ready to get started. Come to the center of your mat with the feet hip width apart. As we begin in the standing position, Taking a few deep breaths here to center yourself and bring the focus to your practice. Stand tall with your feet hip width apart. Grounding down through all four corners of your feet. Raise the arches up. Engage the legs by pulling the kneecaps up and the thigh muscles up onto the thigh bones. Realign the pelvis, potentially bringing the navel slightly in and tailbone down without exaggerating, bringing it into a neutral position. Lengthen your spine, relax your shoulders down and back, and bring the hands to prayer chest, taking a few deep breaths here, finding stability and balance. For the last few breaths, you may want to practice with the eyes closed and notice how it feels. If it's challenging, please open your eyes at any time. But if you can keep the eyes closed, scan the body. Notice how you feel if you feel like you're leaning slightly forwards or leaning slightly back. If the body is waving, Bring it back to the center. Find that grounding through the soles of the feet and the length up through the crown of the head. Building a firm base. Center the body, center the mind. We begin with spine compass. Keeping the feet hip width apart, bring the arms by the side of the body and take a deep inhale to sweep the arms above your head, shoulder width apart. Reach up as high as you can, but keep the shoulders down soft and relaxed. With your exhale, release the left hand down onto your left leg. Then take another deep inhale to stretch up through the right fingertips, creating the length into the spine. Reach up and over to the left side. Feel the stretch all along the right side of the body. Maintain the shoulders in line with your hips. Pull the navel in, tailbone slightly down. And if everything's okay with the lower back, pushing the hips to the right to intensify the stretch into the right side of the body. Last few breaths. Option to bring the left arm up, interlace all 10 fingers, release the index, squeeze the palms together and pull your right hand with the left to go down a little bit deeper for the last three. Keep pulling for two, one. Back to center, release the hands, shoulder width apart. Take a deep breath, stretch up. Exhale the right hand down onto the right leg. Take another deep inhale through the left fingertips, stretching up as high as you can, maintaining that lengthening sensation. Reach up and over to your right. Slide the right hand down the right leg to help you maintain the shoulders and hips in alignment. Imagine your body is between two planes of glass. You're keeping the shoulders in line with the hips. Pull the navel in, tailbone down, and push the hips further to the left. If everything's okay with the lower back, optional, bring the right hand up, interlace all 10 fingers, release the index, squeeze the palms. Don't hang into the waist, but maintain that up and over feeling, that sensation of length. 
Pull the left hand with the right, come deeper. Release, back up to center, split the hands. Look up to your thumbs and stretch the chest up to the ceiling. With another deep inhale to lengthen and lift, reach up higher and start to stretch the eyes and the fingertips towards the back of the room. Go only as far as is comfortable in the spine and do not hang in the lower back. Rather lift through the chest, through the sternum, up to the ceiling to create that big opening for the chest, for the thoracic spine. Press the hips forwards, more weight into the heels, lift the chest up higher, stretch back, look back. Change, inhale, reach back up to center with the lower back flat, bend the knees, fold from the hips, and either walk the hands down the legs or fold forwards. Bring the hands onto the floor. With your two index fingers, grab a hold of the big toes. Chest to thigh, bend the knees as much as you need to to make sure there's contact between the belly and the thighs. Glue them together to maintain the lower back flat. Then shift the weight forwards into the balls of the feet. As you inhale, lengthen the crown of the head towards the ground. As you exhale, bend the elbows and out to the side and pull with the arm strength, pulling the shoulders up away from the ears to lengthen the neck. Feel the stretch into the spine from coccyx to neck, as well as into the legs. If you'd like to intensify, slowly starting to bring the seat bones up higher, just make sure the belly is still onto the thigh, sliding the chest down the legs, pull the arm, Pull with your arm strength. Release, bend the knees. Walk the hands up the legs or come out the way you went in, reaching the arms forwards with the lower back flat. But this time, keep the knees bent into chair pose, Utkatasana. Feet are still hip width apart. Reach and extend the fingertips up towards the ceiling, arms shoulder width apart. If that at any stage is too intense, bring the hands down at the chest in prayer. Otherwise, keep reaching up through the fingertips as you sit down lower into the hips. The knees should stay above the ankles. Press the edges of the feet into the floor, raise the arches up. If the knees are starting to turn in, use your inner thigh strength to realign the knees above the ankles. You are realigning the whole body in this posture. Pull the navel in, engage your core. And if the arms a little bit higher, Bring the hips a little bit lower. Find this balance and take one last deep breath here in and out through the nose. To release, extend the legs and bring the hands back to prayer chest. Goddess pose. Take a big step out to the side with your right foot and come into a nice wide stance. Then turn the toes out, facing the corners of your mat, about 45 degrees. Pull the navel in, tailbone down, and bend the knees to bring the hips low. Now, if you find that the knees are starting to turn inwards, you may have gone down too far. Back off a little bit, realign, take a smaller stance. Readjust to ensure that there's no pain or discomfort in the inner knees. Then bend the knees a little bit more and sink the hips down lower. Pull the navel in once again. Draw the shoulders back as there is a tendency to lean forwards. For the last few breaths, if you'd like to add on the strengthening for the arms, you're welcome to bring them out parallel to the floor with the fingertips facing up to the ceiling. Drop the shoulders down and back. Keep engaging the cores and see if you can sink the hips down a little bit lower. Last few breaths here, staying nice and strong. This is a fierce posture. It enhances focus and concentration while we improve the balance and the coordination of the whole body. Sit down lower. Last three, hold it here. Two, one. Extend the legs, bring the hands onto the hips. Turn the toes inwards. This time, the complete opposite as we pigeon toe the feet. Lock the knees, pull the thigh muscles up, take a deep inhale, lengthen. And as you exhale, folding from the hips with the lower back flat, bring the hands in front of you. Either place the hands onto the floor, shoulder width apart, 
But if the ground is far away, place the hands onto your thighs or the shins and push onto the legs. Holding it here, just a few deep breaths to stretch and release the legs, stretching and opening the inner and back of the thighs. As we stretch and strengthen the back muscles as well. Those of you with flexibility to go further, you're welcome to walk the hands back in line with your heels. Just make sure the spine stays straight as you do so and draw the shoulders away from the ears. To release, walk the hands back out, place them onto your hips, take a deep breath and raise the torso up. Step the feet together at the center of your mat, toes and heels touch, hands to prayer chest. Moving into tree pose. If you need the wall or a chair, please move closer to it at this stage. Find one point in front of you, eye level, that does not move. Your third eye point, also known as your drishti. Keep a focused gaze onto this point, which will support you throughout the balancing postures. If you find balancing challenging, take the variation with a foot onto the ankle or the calf muscle. If everything's okay with the knees, shift the weight into your left leg. Bend and raise the right leg up, holding onto the right knee with your right hand and the foot with the left. Open up from the hip joint. Place the right foot into the crease of the groin and release the right knee down. Right hand in prayer chest, square the hips, pull the navel in. Only if the foot does not slide, bring the left hand to meet the right. Otherwise, keep holding the foot as this posture is about building the strength and balance in the standing leg and everything else is extra. And bring the shoulders away from the ears. Pulling the navel in, tailbone down. Align the pelvis underneath the shoulders. And grow taller through the crown of the head as you find balance and stability in your tree. To release, bring the right knee folds and the foot down, other side. Shift the weight into your right, bring the left leg up and choose your variation, either foot onto the ankle or the leg. Or if you're taking half lotus, bring the left knee up, hold onto the knee and the foot, open from the hip joint. Place the foot into the crease of the groin. And bring the left hand in prayer chest. Once again, only if the foot does not slide, right hand to meet the left. Otherwise, keep holding the foot. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Scan the body to check if it's in alignment. Engage the core, pull the navel into the spine slightly and grow taller, helping you with the balance. Really bring the left knee forwards and the foot down. Next, extended hand to big toe stretch with leg raise. Place the hands onto your hips, shift the weight into your left leg. Bend and raise the right leg up as high as it will go. Hold on to the outside of the right knee and pull the thigh in closer to the chest, maintaining a straight spine. If you find this challenging, stay here. Focus on building the strength in the standing leg. If you are ready for more, bring the right arm on the inside. With your two index fingers, grab a hold of the big toe. Take a deep breath and kick the right heel up towards the ceiling. It's not a forward kick, but an upward kick to get a deep stretch into the back of the right leg, into your hamstrings. Pull the navel in. Drop the right hip down and grow a little bit taller through the crown of the head to help you maintain the stability. If you're quite flexible and you'd like to go further, bend the elbow and pull the heel, the toes up higher towards the ceiling. Slow with control, lower down the right leg to a height you can hold it 10 seconds. If you were holding onto the knee, extend the right leg. All together with the right knee locked, 
point the foot. It's a point with the toes curled. And now hold it 10 seconds. Bring the shoulders above the hips. Pull the navel in. Lift the right leg a little bit higher. Lock the knee. Keep lifting and holding for the last three. Lift up higher. Two. One. Release. Bring the right leg down. Give it a nice shake. As the hip flexors might feel a little stuck after that long hold. Other side. Shift the weight into the right leg, bend the left and bring the left leg up, holding onto the outside of the left knee to begin, pull the thigh into the chest. Or if you're going further, left arm on the inside, hold on to the big toe with your two index fingers, wrap the thumb on top so you have a nice tight grip and then kick the left heel up as high as you can. Maintaining the knee bent is perfectly normal as long as you maintain a straight spine and the focus on the standing leg, building the strength and stability in the right leg, holding it here, breathing smoothly through the nose. This is another great pose that enhances the balance and strength in the legs. Keep pulling up as high as you can through the left arm. Bring the left hip down, hold it here. Slow with control, bring the left leg down to a height you can hold it. Lock the knee, point the foot. Place the hands onto the hips and hold for 10. Lift the leg a little bit higher here, holding it for the last five, four, three, two, four. Release, bring the left leg down, give it a nice shake, take a deep breath. Eagle pose. Inhale, sweep the arms above your head, palms touch. Exhale, big swing of the arms, bring the right arm underneath the left, cross at the elbows, and if it's available, cross again at the wrist to bring the hands in prayer with the thumbs towards you and the pinkies towards the device. If this is not a comfortable grip, you can place the hands onto the shoulders as an alternative, or if you have a strap, holding onto the strap or holding onto the fingers, to create the same experience, the same stretch into the arms. Then bend the knees, draw the hips down low, sit down into an invisible chair without lifting the hips, just the right leg up and over above the left. Squeeze the inner thighs as tight as you can, strengthening the inner thighs, improving the circulation and the pelvic floor muscles. Now it's not important to hook the foot around the left ankle. It's important to maintain the balance on the left leg and to focus on your alignment. So maybe drawing the knees slightly to the right, the elbows to the left, so that one day your wrist, elbows, knees and ankles are on a straight line. Now sit down lower, draw the shoulders away from the ears and back. Keep the spine slightly arched so the lower back stays flat. Compression into the hips, sit. Release, deep inhale, sweep the arms above your head, palms touch. Other side, exhale, sweep the left arm underneath the right, cross at the elbows at the wrist, and eagle the arms. Drop the shoulders down and back, already feeling that deep stretch into the arms. Then bend the knees and then sit the hips nice and low. This time, left leg up as high as you can, up and over above the right, and then squeeze the thighs as tightly as you can. Align the knees with the elbows and the wrists, bringing the knees to the left, elbows to the right. Then drop the shoulders down and back, sit down a little bit lower. Feel the strengthening in the legs, in the lower back muscles, pull the navel in to keep the core active, hold it. Release, inhale, sweep the arms above your head, palms touch. Exhale, arms out to the side and in prayer chest. Step to the back of your mat, toes and heels touch, balancing stick, warrior three. Sweep the arms above your head, palms touch, interlace all ten fingers, release the index and take a big step with your right foot forwards. Shift the weight into your right leg, lift the left toes off the mat, lock the knees, lock the elbows. Create a straight line from fingertips to toes first, then pivoting from the hips, just like a seesaw, bring the body down and leg up going only as far as you can maintain a straight line. So staying in a diagonal if necessary. And maybe one day 
torso and leg parallel to the floor. If that's you today, roll the left hip down, lock the knees, lock the elbows, stretch the fingertips away from the toes, draw the arms up higher, closer to the ears and hold it. Really step back, right foot to meet the left, keep the arms above your head, other side. Big step forwards with your left foot, shift the weight into your left leg and raise the right toes up. Deep inhale to stretch up. And exhale, pivot from the hips, body down, leg up. Once you're in, holding it here, 10 seconds, roll the right hip down in line with facing the mat. Then stretch the fingertips away from the toes, raise the arms up higher above the ears. Strengthening the legs, the core, while we continue to improve the stability, hold it there. Change. Step the left foot back to meet the right, on the other side of the body and in for a chest. Take a deep breath. Airplane into half moon pose. Sweep the arms above your head, palms touch. Big step forwards with your right foot. Lift the left toes up, pivot from the hips. This time split the arms and bring the arms out to the side like a flying airplane. Holding it here, just one deep breath as a transition. Then bring both hands down onto the mat. You can bend the right knee if that helps you. Right hand underneath the right shoulder. Lengthen the right waist first. Then extend the right leg. Lift the left hip above the right. Lift the left leg up higher. And reach either the left hand onto the left hip so that the hips stay facing forwards and to support the alignment. Or if you can go further, left fingertips up towards the ceiling, holding it here. Your right fingertips barely touching the floor, all the energy, all the strength up through the left hand. Now it is quite challenging on the balance, so stay here, keep the gaze onto the mat. However, if you want to challenge yourself, start to move the gaze forwards and eventually up towards the left fingertips. Stretching out the hamstrings, lift the leg up higher. And release, bring the hands and feet down, ragdoll. Grab a hold of the opposite elbow with the opposite hand and sway side to side a few times to release any tension in the back of the legs and in the spine. Release the hands, pull the navel in and slowly roll yourself up. Step to the back of your mat, toes and heels touch. Inhale, sweep the arms above your head, palms touch. Big step forwards with your left foot, shift the weight into your left leg. Lift the right toes up, pivot from the hips, body down, leg up and split the arms, airplane. Take one deep breath here. Now reach your hands onto the mat, bend the left knee, align the left hand underneath the left shoulder. You can always use the support of a block or the chair if it helps you, if it's too intense for the hamstrings. Lengthen the left waist, then extend the left leg, right hand onto your right hip, lift the right hip above the left, and optional extend the right fingertips up to the ceiling. Lift the leg up as high as you can, Either stay looking down at the gaze or you can look forward for a more advanced practice looking all the way up to your hand. Release, look down, hand and feet down, ragdoll. Grab a hold of the opposite elbow with the opposite hand and sway side to side. Well done. Bring the hands onto the floor, bend the knees, wide child. Open the knees, the mat width, toes touch. Then make yourself comfortable and start to walk the fingertips forwards towards the top corners of your mat to stretch and release the spine, the front of the body. Slide the hands underneath the shoulders. Push yourself back up into all fours. And turn around and lie down. Lying down onto your back. 
Keep the knees bent, reclining pigeon. Cross the right ankle above the left knee. Bring the left leg in towards you. Thread the right hand through the gap between the legs and hold behind the left thigh or the left shin to help you pull the leg in. Stretching and releasing the outer right leg, the glute, as we compress the hips. Release, bring the right foot down, other side, left ankle above the right knee, open from the hips, thread the left hand through the gap and pull the right leg in. Neck stays long, in line with the spine. Really slide the legs away, Savasana. A final reclining leg stretch. Bend the right knee, bring the right thigh in towards the chest and interlace all 10 fingers around the leg. Pull the leg in, create a deep compression into the right hip area. Reclining big toe stretch. Bring the right arm on the inside, grab a hold of the big toe with the two index fingers and the thumb included on top as we did earlier in the standing series and kick the heel up towards the ceiling. Even if the knee is bent, you're getting a deep stretch into the back of the right leg. Release, bend the right knee, curl the right toes underneath the left knee, spine twist. Right arm out to the side with your left hand, gently encourage the right knee to the left and move the chin over your right shoulder, twisting from the crown of the head to your toes. Gently untwist, slide the right leg away, bend the left other side. Wind removing, interlace all 10 fingers around the left shin or behind the left thigh, pull the leg in. Keeping the elbows close to the waist. Bring the left arm on the inside. Grab a hold of the big toe. Wrap the two index fingers around the big toe. And then kick the left heel up to the seal. Spine twist, bend the left knee, curl the left toes underneath the right knee. Left arm out with your right hand, pull the left knee to the right and look over your left shoulder. Gently untwist. Bring both knees in towards the chest. Make a few circles clockwise and anti-clockwise. Massage the lower back. Then close the eyes and slide the legs away into your final savasana. Take a few deep breaths here. Taking in all the benefits from your practice. As balancing poses not only challenge and strengthen the body, but they also encourage focus, concentration, and mindfulness. By practicing the sequence regularly, you will not only develop greater physical balance, but you will also cultivate a greater sense of inner calm and stillness. Please stay as long as you wish in your final savasana in the comforts of your home, enjoying this moment of stillness. Wishing you an amazing rest of your day.
Namaste.